Hello everybody. Well, you were probably expecting something to uh, start this week on either Monday or, uh, well, not Monday because it was President's Day, it's no delivery, uh, but probably expecting something from Tuesday or Wednesday at the very least. Well, today is Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. No TTMs this week. In fact, we didn't even have mail delivery and there's the uh, outdoor game featuring my wife's uh, Colorado Avalanche, so you're probably going to hear some sound effects in the background there, so. Sorry. Not sorry, but sorry. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, no, we didn't even have power for most of the day on Tuesday, because for those of you who are scoring at home, even if you're alone, Texas sucks. We got, uh, let's see here, about six inches of snow. Um, our government decided not to enforce anything about uh, saying, hey, uh, we need to really winterize our power structures here. So pretty much went in one ear and out the other with everybody. I mean, even ERCOT, the company that's supposed to oversee all that, their current CEO was saying back as far as 2011, hey, we need to do some winterization updates on all this stuff. And nobody bothered to actually uh, enforce that and do it and get funding for it. In fact, funding for it was rejected. So, and also, if you weren't paying attention, our really awesome senator, Ted Cruz, of course, uh, rather than staying around and helping people who need it like a good uh, governing person should, decided instead he was going to flee to Mexico for a few days. So, uh, yeah, screw that guy, screw everybody in Texas government, um, yeah. So because of that... But Clay Jenkins is awesome. Yeah, Clay Jenkins, uh, he's a Dallas judge, has done an amazing job, um, I would vote him for governor tomorrow if he were to run, so, uh, anyways, so like I said, it's Saturday here. <coughs> Good news is my cough has almost completely disappeared now after having COVID about two months ago, but... Do you need some water? I'm alright for now, thank okay. you. But, uh, so yeah, we we got power back, fortunately, late in the day on Thursday. I know people, or late in the day on Tuesday. I know people who didn't get it back, though, until Thursday. So, uh, yeah, um, just such an absolute fumbling and mishandling of it by Encore, by ERCOT, by everybody involved in state government of Texas, anybody uh, on the federal level from Texas as well. But, uh, like I said, though, we got power back. Um, I was supposed to have some mail on Friday. Had two TTMs on informed delivery, and it's two that I was really excited about. Well, they didn't get here on Friday. They also didn't get here today either. Uh, mail service is back to normal now. I mean, my wife got a package earlier today, so uh, yeah, not exactly happy about that. I can even tell you what uh, both of them are. One of them was Bill Mazeroski, Hall of Famer, paid 10 bucks for that for my 72 set. And uh, so yeah, hopefully that's going to get back here soon, maybe maybe Monday. Maybe it'll be like those other ones I had a couple about a month ago. They got smacked with the turn to sender stickers ended up here. But uh, the other one was one that I paid for through a private signing. And I go, God, this this has been an ordeal. I saw the, uh, it was a Jason Kipnis private signing through the Trove Sports Den. The Trove, great reputation, everything. I've never worked with them before until this one, but um, always heard good things about them. So... I saw it up on their Facebook page on uh, October 5th that uh, Jason Kipnis was doing a sign for $7. And so I had this great uh, dual card of him and Francisco Lindor. I'd gotten it signed by Lindor in person back probably around, I think it was in the 2016 season. I think it was a 2016 Heritage. I got signed in the 2016 season because I had it with me in Cleveland 2016, hoping I might be able to get it signed during the World Series victory parade that didn't happen. But, um... So finally this year, I saw it on the Trove's website on uh, October 5th that he's going to be doing a signing around November 7th. And I'm like, okay, I'm in on this. So paid for it on the 6th, mailed it out on the 10th. Uh, they confirmed that it had gotten there and everything. And so on November 7th, all the items were mailed out to Jason Kipnis, shipped out to him for him to do the signing. We got notification first on uh, November 10th that he had arrived home late from vacation and uh, he'd be getting to everything soon. It's like, okay, yeah, that happens. November 18th, Kipnis' agent says, well, it's going to take him a while to get through all this. November 28th, his agent says, yep, he's, he's still working through. He's got 700 pieces here to sign. It's going to take a while. At this point, I'm kind of, you know, going, oh, great. Yeah. Pay no attention to that sound in the background. Something just happened in the game, apparently. Yeah, there. So, anyways, early December, reports come out that Kipnis has COVID, and so he won't be signing during then. December 10th, the Trove says that they're waiting for the item still to be shipped back. And finally, December 23rd, they got notification and said, okay, he's done. He signed everything. We'll ship him back. And on December 29th, items arrived there in uh, south, uh, southwest Ohio there at uh, the Trove. And so they started mailing everything back. They said uh, December 31st through the, uh, I think it was like the 2nd or 3rd of January, they finally got everything shipped out. I got notification on New Year's Eve, December 31st, that my card was being mailed back. All right, great. Excited to see this thing. 
So a week goes by, and people start receiving their items around January 8th or thereabouts. <coughs> I still didn't have anything. A few more weeks go by, a few more weeks go by. It keeps on going by. And finally, I messaged uh, the guy who runs it on February 11th, or on, excuse me, on January 22nd, and never got anything back from him on that. I'm thinking, oh, God, this, this is not good. I'm going to lose this, you know, Lindor autograph, which uh, one of my favorite players from when he was with the Tribe there up until recently here. Hoping he does well with the Mets. So, uh, people, are, but the good part about this, though, was that people were still receiving their Kipnis items back. I mean, I saw on February 11th, somebody got cards back that had been supposedly shipped six weeks before. So that just shows you where USPS is on their give a crap level right now. So February 11th, I left a comment on their page saying, hey, has anybody else not gotten their Kipnis items back yet? Because this is very disconcerting. So uh, the Trove messaged me and said, hey, let us know if the card never gets to you, and if necessary, if necessary, we will refund your uh, price that you paid for this, and we'll buy the item off of you, basically, that got lost. So, great on them for that offer. I will say two huge thumbs up on the way that they were handling that. So, like I said, Friday, February 19th, on my informed delivery, there's an item with postage matches, what I would have been using around that time. It has the initials JK written up in the corner, and I'm like, all right, finally, it's going to be here. And it's still not here. So that's been great. That's been my week here to this point. So yeah, I mean, like I said, again, I'm not blaming the Trove in the slightest on this. They have handled this very well. They did what they could with it. And, you know, they've offered to say, hey, we will refund it. We will buy the item from you, basically, if necessary, if it never gets to you. So A plus on them for all that. But USPS, get it together, will you please? Please? Am I asking that much? I don't think I am. So, earlier today I was sitting here, I'm thinking, God, what am I going to do with this this week's video? So, well, there's my seven-minute rants there to start things out. But on uh, Twitter, I put it out there and said, all right, what should I do here? And somebody said, well, uh, I don't know, make a video of you going out playing the snow. Make one of you, you know, opening some cards. Make one of seeing how many TTMs you can crank out in 15 minutes. See, uh, you know, something like that. I'm like, yes, let's go down the street there. We'll see if Playball is open. It's a card shop here in Arlington. Besides, I need to get some uh, 5,000 count boxes anyway, so you know what? I'm going to grab those, look through, and I found a couple boxes that we're going to go ahead and open here on the channel today. First one, let's get some 93 Opeachy Premier Baseball. Oh, there we go. That's going to be a fun one. I actually have a little bit from this. I actually have the Trevor Hoffman from that one signed. That's, I think, his rookie card. Oh, wait, no, no. I stand corrected. He was in 92 Bowman, so it's technically not his rookie card, but still, it's a an early card of him with the Florida Marlins, and I actually have that one signed from a... Uh, seeing him at a double-A game. And uh, so I also picked up this one, this uh, Edge Ice Hockey. This has all sorts of AHL and IHL players. And it's made by the, uh, instead of the NHLP, it's got the PHPA, Pro Hockey Players Association. They don't have as many uh, restrictions on the photos they could use, the NHLPA and NHL required. So, for example, I, excuse me, I know a set that Classic, ooh, excuse me, a little hiccup there. I said the Classic had put out back around 93, 94, somewhere around there, actually had an enforcer's insert that showed fights on the cards. It's like, the NHL will never let you get away with that one. So it's like, all right, let's see what kind of tough guys are going to be in this edge ice box here. And so what I figure I'm going to do here in a moment is I'm going to just go ahead and crack these boxes and, you know, we'll see what we get, see if there's any TTM stuff, any fun stories about any of these uh, minor league hockey players in here, and we'll go through those. So... And pause for just a moment. We'll restart my uh, recording here after a moment. We'll go ahead and crack these boxes on open. All right, let's change the angle here just a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to show off some of the cards from here. But go ahead and start out with the Opeachy Premier Baseball box here. 1993. Much more by eye ounce. I steep come with a half ounce. No, that's not going. No, just kidding. Anyways, um, <laughs> so 93 Opeachy Premier Baseball. Take a look at that box right there. Not really sure what all you're going to find in here. Um, it's the first year of the Marlins and the Rockies. And typically, I think this one had quite a few kind of, you know, rookies and such in it there. And, uh, of course, you get the uh, dual French and English text on it. So, you know, let's go ahead and break these on open. Eight cards per pack. We've got, uh, let's see here. Not sure how many packs in here. Let's just do a quick count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 36 packs in here, so 132 cards set as well. So we're probably going to end up getting, hey, hey, over there, whoa. So we'll probably get close to uh, maybe two full sets out of this, too, with the uh, 
if the collation breaks down as it should. Eight cards plus one insert in each of these packs. So multiply that by 36 and you'll get numbers. So let's see here. Right off the top, we get the uh, Star Performers insert. <laughs> kind of funny. I'll show you this here in a second. But there you go, the Eric Karos one. So, yeah. And, you know, I just mentioned a second ago that I had gotten that Trevor Hoffman one signed. And guess who's right in that first pack there? But that exact Trevor Hoffman card. You may have seen it on the channel before. I may have shown it off when I've been showing off Hall of Famers and such. So, there you go. Nice, uh, nice start right there. But uh, let's see here. So... See if we get any other big names throughout any of these. Willie Wilson right there. He's been TTMing lately, but I need him on some set cards first. Shown with the Cubs right there. Of course, more famous as a Royal. Also played with the A's for a bit. Not sure if he went anywhere after the Cubs or if he was there, where, there anywhere else between the uh, A's and the Royals there. But another Hall of Famer in the pack right there with uh, Mr. Harold Baines. There you go. So, yeah, Yvonne Calderon, the late Yvonne Calderon. We got Jimmy Key. A few uh, 90s big names there, 80s big names in case of Calderon. Continue on through a few of these. Got a Tom Glavin star performers insert there right off the top. Uh, let's see. Pack with another two Hall of Famers in it here. This time featuring Larry Walker of the Expos and Greg Maddox in one of his first cards with the Braves, I believe. Is it? Yeah, because it says play to the Cubs there. So there you go. One of the things with this premiere set is they got a lot of photos from spring training with uh, players with their new teams. So to go along with that, like for example, Norm Charlton shown with the Marlins for, or with the uh, Mariners for the first time. Greg Gagne, solid TTMer, shown with the Royals for the first time. Candy Maldonado shown with the Cubs for the first time. Stuff like that. So really fun set for uh, anything like that. If you ever, if you ever collect cards, the first card a player has with a new team or anything like that, this would be the product for you. Got the Will Clark star performers there. Solid TTMer. Oh, let's see here. This may be our first pack without a Hall of Famer the way it's looking. And yep, nothing unfortunately in here. So we'll continue on down. Will Clark probably being the best one that was out of that batch. Uh, out of this one, we've got a Robbie Alomar star performer. So the, uh, there you go, a Hall of Famer in at least in, uh, three of the first four packs right there. After him, though, let's see. Any other... Big names. No, no uh, big names, unfortunately, after that. No Hall of Famers. Uh, yeah. Tom Brunanski, formerly a very solid TTMer. He'll still sign nowadays at, uh, I think, five bucks a pop, something like that. We've got, uh, let's see here, Mark McGuire, star performers right there. Let's see, a Tim Bogar card that I could have used a couple years ago when he was uh, interim manager of the Rangers. And yeah, nothing, uh, nothing really doing here in terms of big names. Decent TTMer in David Need, a uh, never TTMer in uh, Randy Myers. Won't sign at all, for that matter. TTM, IP, never heard of him signing at all. I think he's done maybe a couple of reunions with the uh, Nasty Boys there in the uh, 90 Reds. Continuing on through, we've got a Juan Gonzalez star performer right off the top of that pack. Solid TTMer, pretty solid player for a while. Um, yeah, nothing really going on there. Um... Nice one of Dave Stewart right there, the Blue Jays, a guy who had a couple solid seasons. He's got a couple cards I need to get signed eventually, and uh, the Trove that I mentioned earlier actually uh, does a lot of signings with Dave Stewart, so if you have an item that you need him to sign, definitely look into them for uh, any of those purposes. Just recommendation, though, for any private signing from here on, I'm definitely going to be going with uh, tracked shipping on my return, though. Worth the extra three or four bucks. Next pack, hey, there we go. Nice uh, Nolan Ryan right off of there. And that star performers set. Aside from that, uh, yeah, no other real big names. Got a uh, guy who's briefly with the Indians in Mike Christopher. I'll have to see if he TTMs at all. Add him to the tribe collection. He may have spent some time with the Dodgers as well, I want to say. Something like that. Let's see. I'm not finding a whole lot of Indians in here at all, which I'm not too surprised by. Got a Barry Bonds right off the top in this one, star performer. Uh, let's see here. Oh, another uh, Mike Christopher card, that pack very similar to the previous one. Spike Owen's been TTMing a bit lately. He's played for pretty much everybody ever, so there you go. And last one out of this column. Well, this one's a pretty nifty one. This is a borderless star performers card. Uh, 
Ooh, nifty. This one's got a gold back on it instead of a green back, and it is Hall of Famer Kirby Puckett. I have not seen those before. I've only seen the uh, gold border ones there. So, nice. All right. Um, aside from him in this pack, ending up with doubles in one pack, not something I'm a fan of, but Doug Dravick is uh, the one that's in there. Got a... Uh, pull it up there so you can see both of those there. But, yeah, not a real big fan of doubles in a pack, but, hey, Doug Dravick signs. I'll take it. Personalizes everything, so if that's not your thing, uh, well, too bad. <laughs> You're rolling on through these. Column number two. Start with the uh, bottom left and going over the bottom right on the next one. Here we got a uh, Hall of Famer and Edgar Martinez right off the top in there. Troy Neal, who I need to TTM pretty soon. Another David Need. My third Doug Drabic card already. And again, doubles in the same pack there as the Troy Neal card strikes one more time. All right. So, continue on through. <coughs> For anybody who cares right now, we've got uh, that, uh, like I said, the uh, outdoor game between Vegas and Colorado on right now. Colorado's up 1-0 in the first. Whoop, whoop. Who had Colorado's goal, by the way? Sam Gerard in his first game back from injury. There we go. So, quick update there for you. Love the uh, jerseys they've got there. These are those, uh, the, uh, what do they call those things? Reverse retro. Reverse retro jerseys. Yeah, they brought out the uh, Quebec Nordiques design, and I absolutely love the Nordiques. I have an old Nordiques jersey that I wear quite a bit. Still haven't broken out any jerseys on this channel. What the hell? But, um, yeah, so I've got that one, and so, you know, when I open this hockey box, I may have to go and change into that jersey and uh, go from there. So, we'll try to speed through these. So, uh, there we go, Kirby Puckett on the Star Performers card. Oh, ah, we got a Cal man. Ripken. We got Mike Piazza. That's pretty nice right there. Another uh, Back to another dual Hall of Famer pack right there. It's a early second-year Piazza right there as well. He had the rookie card in the 92 Bowman set. I had quite a few of his 93s, though. My wife is uh, gesticulating very wildly after an avalanche player oh. took a high stick. And okay, they, did, they did call it. They did call it. You're okay. You're okay. 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 We're cool here. Yeah, I call, calm okay, yourself okay. there, Chief. Okay. So, next pack here, we've got a Fred McGriff star performer. Ah, oh, let's see. Cecil Fielder, a guy who could have been a Hall of Famer, but not quite able to pull it off. And another could-be Hall of Famer in Jose Canseco, who, uh, yeah, sabotaged his own chances. And Harold Baines, once again, Hall of Famer right there. So, two almost Hall of Famers and one Hall of Famer, and a should-be Hall of Famer in Fred McGriff to start the thing off. Rolling right on through. Let's see here. All right, we have Pat Listach in the Star Performers card. I might have that one signed somewhere along the line. Jeff Mutis. I actually TTM'd him a couple of years ago. Good signer. I saw him make his Major League debut, actually, against the Twins in 91. Um, aside from that, nothing real big in this one. Uh, Pete Incavilia has a card in there, though, so... He just uh, got on as a manager of a minor league team somewhere. I forget exactly which one. He's been managing the Indy Miners until fairly recently, and he did a few alumni appearances with the Rangers. So, gotten him in person a few times. He used to TTM about 10, 15 years ago, too. Gary Sheffield, star performers. Uh, let's see here. Nothing else really big in this pack. Dave Steeb right there during his uh, final season with the White Sox in there. And yeah, he was with the Blue Jays all the way up and through that. Okay, because I couldn't remember if he had taken a year off and tried to come back with the White Sox or what had happened there. <coughs> no. So. Got to see Steve throw his no-hitter in 1990 against the Indians. I was at the game about three rows behind home plate in the upper deck. Moving on to this pack, we've got a star performer's Greg Maddox card. Followed by Paul Molitor. So wow, two Hall of Famers right at the very top in that one. Uh, let's see, Darren Dahl and John Cruck back-to-back -back in that one. See here, got Deion Sanders on the star performers there. I think star performers would have been better for him in a football card than a baseball one, but yeah, whatever. Right. Let's see, rest of this pack. Uh, we've got a Delano De Shields and a Jim Abbott, two guys that I enjoyed watching as a kid. Two more packs to go off of this column, and I think I might just call it a night or call it a call it a segment, I guess, here after these two. We'll go into the hockey box after this, but we've got Frank Thomas right there. Another Frank with Frank Bullock in this pack, a good TTMer. Don Mattingly, Paul Molitor, 
and a double of Frank Bullock in that same pack. This has been very, very bad on the collation front there. I mean, a lot of packs here where I've had doubles in the same pack. Why can it never be on the big names? It's always, you know, like the the Frank Bullocks and the Doug Drabics of the world and never the, uh, never the Nolan Ryans. And another one of these ones. This is a uh, draft pick card here. Borderless one of Expo's first round pick, BJ Wallace. I've not seen those ones until just now, so cool to grab one of those. Rest of the pack here, we got a Carlos Bayerga. Hey, there's a couple. Tri oh, hey, we got two Indians in here. One guy that I just TTM'd recently, and I didn't know this card existed showing him in an Indians uniform, but Mike Bilecki. I remember him being with the Indians. I haven't seen many cards of him with them, though, so kind of wish I had seen that one. But my TTM him eventually again another time, so keep that one in mind. And Barry Larkin at the very back of the pack there is a Hall of Famer. So, there you go. I think that's probably good enough for now. I mean, that's half a box right there of Opeechee Premier Baseball 1993 set right there. We'll go through the rest of them just off the air here at some point. Let you know if I come up with anything good. Right now, go ahead and take a break before we go ahead and open up this hockey box. So, stay tuned. Got a few hockey ones on the way. Vive le Nordique! There it is. Had to break it out. They're wearing it on there. I mean, they're wearing the white version in the current uh, Avs colors, but still. Had to break that out. I mean, come on. An awesome jersey, right? So. Yes. There you go. Can confirm. So, like I said, I got this box of Edge Ice 95-96 minor league hockey cards. We're going to go ahead and take a look and see what we're going to pull out of this one. 24 packs of 12 cards. Not sure what the set breakdown is on or anything like that, but should be some uh, fun cards and uh, some great stories to go along with these. So... First off, right off the top of the pack, is, or top, top of the box, this little promo pack here. The wall. Looks like it has goalie masks, and yeah, it looks like a uh, goalie's only insert here, die cut. So, this could be fun right here. Let's see what we've got here. So, the wall, we have uh, two, two. got Ray LeBlanc, who of course was the 1992 Team USA goalie at the Olympics. I think the U.S. had a fourth place finish that year. Lost to the Czechs in the bronze medal game, if I remember right. Kalamazoo K-Wings, or Kalamazoo Wings at this point goalie. Manny Fernandez, his helmet. Got, uh, let's see, is that the Detroit Vipers? Yeah, Detroit Vipers, Rick Nickel. Nickel, Knickle, something like that. K-N-I-C-K-L-E. Ah, uh, let's see, this one, I think, Houston Arrows. Yep, Houston Arrows, Troy Gamble. Got uh, the Las Vegas Thunder, which was, yeah, Pokey Reddick. I actually watched a junior game sitting right next to him at one point, back when I was broadcasting. Uh, let's see here. This one is Wendell Young of the Chicago Wolves, former Pittsburgh Penguins netminder. I think he may have been... He was there right before they won the Cup. He was the uh, backup to Tom Barrasso in the 89-90 season. 90-91, they brought in uh, uh, Frank Petrangelo. Uh, moving on here, this one, I think Portland Pirates, maybe? Yeah, Portland Pirates, Jim Carrey. Doesn't really have a whole lot to do with hockey now to kind of avoid signing autographs. He even just doesn't want to be remembered for hockey at all. Weird. Oh, uh, let's see. This one's a Flames one. This would be, yeah, St. John Flames. Dwayne Rollison. He's a netminder there at that point. Oh, uh, let's see. We've got uh, Les Kuntar of the Hershey Bears. That one. Can't tell who, what team that one is. Okay, Albany River Rats with Mike Dunham. Future uh, backup to Marty Brodeur, and eventually the starting netminder there for Nashville, and I think spent some time with the Rangers, if I remember right, as well. This one is... who is that? Oh, Eric Fischode of the Worcester Ice Cats. Fisch was in the uh, Islanders organization, if I remember right. Islanders? Drafted by the Maple Leafs and traded to the Islanders. There we go, so... And last, this is from the Red Wings, so the Adirondack Wings. Yeah, Adirondack Red Wings with Kevin Hodson on that one. So it's pretty cool. Right off the top there, just the uh, little 12-card die-cut goalie helmet insert. Not sure how many of these guys signed by mail, but I'm sure a few of them do. Uh, I'm afraid Corey Mansfield is a big goalie collector. He might be really interested in these ones for all I know, so I'll check in with him on those. But like I said, we've got 12 packs in here, or 24 packs in here, 12 cards each. And so... Take a look and see what we've got here. So some potential inserts include Showtime, The Wall, Quantum Motion, Hat Trick, Crucible, and Live in Large. Chance on those, The Wall, 1 in every 15, Instant Replay, 1 in 75, Live in Large, 1 in 45, Crucible, 1 in 20, Hat Trick, 1 in 24. So maybe one of each in this box if I'm lucky. We'll see. 
So, starting right off, like I said, these are all going to be minor league ones. And let's see here. So we've got Sebastian Bordalo. We've got Yannick Perrault, who uh, went on to do a pretty decent career in the NHL. The Kings, he was with the Maple Leafs as well. Maybe the Canadians, I think. But got his autograph a few times in person. And hey, there we go. That's what I was hoping for was a Cleveland Lumberjack. We'd see some of them. And so right there, you get Ryan Savoya. That was a team that I grew up watching right there. It was the Cleveland Lumberjacks. So really cool to get one of those guys right off the bat in the first pack I opened. Got Jamie Allison, who uh, played up in the NHL with the Flames and maybe the Blue Jackets as well. I forget now. Jan Shaloon, who was with uh, Kansas City Blades. There we go. And oh, there's another one of those, uh, the wall ones right there that I had just had the whole pack of right there. But there's another one of the Troy Gamble uh, goalie mask cards. Moving on through, we got Michelle Picard. We have Manny Fernandez, I mentioned before. Michigan K Wings or Kalamazoo Wings, whichever one. Jason Cullimore, who. Got his autograph a few times when he was playing for, God, who was he with? Vancouver, maybe, at one point? I forget now. Got another Lumberjack there, Mike Stevens. Tough guy there in that organization. I think he played up with the Flyers at one point, maybe. Not certain off the top of my head. I have to look back on that. Matthias Nordstrom, Kings defenseman, shown here with the Rangers organization in Binghamton. And Tom Draper of the Milwaukee Admirals. So, great way to start this one off. I mean, two Cleveland Lumberjacks right there. That's... Uh, I like that start, for sure. Moving right along into pack number two. Got Eric LeCompte, who I know nothing about. One of the Showtime cards. See, has the Showtime thing across the top there. Is that an insert at all, or is that just... It was, and it's... Uh, looks like it may just be kind of a... Uh, not an insert necessarily, but a uh, kind of a subset in regular said. So you've got Rob Dobson, shown here with Houston. He used to play with the Cleveland Lumberjacks for a little bit. Michael Pavanka, who was with the Detroit Vipers on this one, longtime Washington Capitol. It's interesting, there's at least two members of the Capitals, longtime members of the Capitals, from uh, the former Czechoslovakia, who were both playing for the uh, Detroit Vipers this season and in this set. See if you can think of who the other one might be. But like I said, Michael Pavanka was right here. See if you can think of the other one before he uh, comes up in a pack, and we'll see if we uh, come across him. Right here we've got a Corey Schwab, longtime netminder with uh, Tampa Bay, I believe. Not sure where else he was, but I remember him definitely with Tampa Bay Lightning. Got his autograph a few times when he played for them. Well, this one's kind of cool. This one is... Uh, I have no idea what's uh, what this one would be. It might be the... Uh, I don't know, is this a hat trick one? Is this... Yeah, hat trick, instant replay, live in large, crucible. Doesn't really say which one, but there's that Michael Pavanka again, but check that one out. It's got this uh, cool foil effect on it there. So, not sure what it is. I like it, though. Let's see, here we've got uh, Mark Astley, not to be confused with Rick. We've got uh, Martin Lapointe right here as well. I just mailed off to him, actually. Got him a number of times in person when he was playing in Boston. I think I'd try TTMing him here as well. He's working with the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Got Darby Hendrickson. We've got Scott Arneal, who was a longtime assistant coach with Buffalo, if I remember right. That's how I got him in person several times. Eventually went to Columbus, I think, as a coach. Played up in the NHL with Buffalo, Winnipeg. Um, yeah, Buffalo and Winnipeg, at least. Got Todd Gillingham. Was he a tough guy? I think he was. Yeah, a couple of 200 PIM seasons right there. 6'2", 205 out of uh, Newfoundland. Here's a nice one. Nikolai Habibulin, one of my favorite goalies. Absolutely stunning autograph that guy will sign as well. But he was a long time with uh, Winnipeg, Phoenix, Tampa Bay. There was one of him with the Springfield Falcons. Also got a card of Greg Poslowski here with the Peoria Rivermen. Who was he up with? Calgary at one point. I think there's a couple other teams he played for in the NHL too. Maybe Winnipeg, I want to say. Kind of forgetting off the top of my head there. Let's see here. So we're on to, is this pack number three of this box? Yeah, pack number three. I've gotten through uh, three packs so far in the time it took me to get through, I think, like about nine of that uh, baseball box. But a lot more to say on these ones for sure. So we've got Valerie Burre. We've got Chris Terrian, who made it up with the Flyers after playing with the Hershey Bears. Two guys whose autographs I got in person a number of times. We've got Barry Moore. We've got Doug Evans. Oh, no, it was the other Evans. I was thinking of Kevin Evans. But Doug Evans was an NHLer at least. Played up with, who 
was it? He's up with the Flyers at one point. Um, I think he may have been another one who was with the Winnipeg Jets for a bit. I was thinking of Kevin Evans, who was a legendary minor league cannibal. He had a 648 penalty minute season, which uh, was the IHL record. And actually, I think it was the entire pro hockey record for a number of years. Got Ziggy Palfi right there, another uh, European transplant who was playing in the IHL there for a bit. Now that I think of it, this may have been during the lockout was why they had these guys uh, all in there. So that's why uh, Pavanka was there. That would explain why his teammate that I have not yet gotten to, and hopefully will get to, though, was there. Mike Manilock. I remember him coming up with the Flyers at one point, I think. Lonnie Loach of the Detroit Vipers. Another one with that kind of cool foil effect going on with it. So based on that, I've gotten two of those right quickly. I would guess those might be Crucible. I don't know. Like I said, I like it, though, whatever it is. We've got goalie Evgeny Ryabchikov. We've got Eric Fichaud, who we mentioned earlier. Another Cleveland Lumberjack here, this time in the old jerseys here with Chris Tamer. Two more of those back when they were playing at the old Richfield Coliseum. Once they moved into Gundarina, they switched over to the ones that you saw in the uh, cards they got in the first pack. We've got Stefan Morin here and Peter White. If I remember right, Peter White eventually made it up with Philly... Edmonton, and maybe Chicago, I want to say. Sounds right to me, at least, in my mind. Pack number four. We've got here Curtis Bowen. Bowen made it up. I know he was a flyer for a bit, and it looks like he was also with... And I was Ottawa of the OHL. He's in the Red Wings organization, but I don't think he ever played with the Wings themselves. We've got Ethan Morrow. We've got Philip Derouville. Another Cleveland Lumberjack right there. This time shown in the white jersey. Looks like those, okay. So I wasn't really sure on those jerseys if they had the blue outline around the black numbers or not. And I think they did. Because when I got my jersey personalized, I did it with plain black numbers. And then I kind of started having second thoughts almost immediately after I was got it done. I'm like, wait a second. Uh, but either way, got a Lumberjacks jersey in there too. So a couple of them. So Michael Monjo, we've got Corey Hirsch, another longtime netminder. He I know was with Vancouver for a bit. Came up in the Rangers org here, as you see. I remember where else? Maybe with the Devils at some point? I forget now. That's Steve Maltes, who was on the inaugural year of the Columbus Blue Jackets, shown here with the Chicago Wolves. Uh, let's see here. Andreas Johansson later went on to the Pittsburgh Penguins after some time with the Worcester Ice Cats. David Ling, Pokey Reddick, Craig Fisher, Joey Gage, and Darcy Tucker, longtime NHL. They're mostly with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Spent a little time with the uh, Avalanche there as well. <coughs> All right, next one up. Having a little bit of problem with the cards sticking together, but fortunately nothing nothing truly horrendous at this point, though. No total bricking of them, just a little bit of uh, stickiness to work through on them. Got here we've got Jordan Willis of the K-Wings. Another netminder there, Mike Kennedy. Calvin is the guy with the... Uh, we also got Kip Miller right here. Brother of Kevin and Kelly Miller out of Lansing, Michigan. Got Eric Manlow. We've got a uh, Sergei Klimovich card and a hat trick card. This is a redemption card. So, uh, well, that's too bad. That's uh, kind of just a bit out of date. It had to be received by December 31st of 1996. So, sadly, I'm about 25 years too late on that one, but... Uh, it would have gotten me, I would have to list my top three teams, the IHL or AHL, and player from one of these teams who appears in the Edge Ice Series 1 base card set will sign a listed the listed item, which in this case is a signed action shot. Send that in along with uh, 10 wrappers, and bingo, bango, I would have gotten a signed photo. So, oh well, a little late. Moving on, we've got Paul Healy. Let's get these all separated here first. So Paul Healy, Dave Christian, he was actually friends with Dave Christian on Facebook. Former Cleveland Lumberjacks, shown here, of course, with the, was this the Minnesota Moose at this point? Yeah, it was still the Minnesota Moose, before they moved to the Manitoba Moose. No, it's Jeff Christian, I'm thinking of those with them. Dave Christian was on the U.S. Olympic team, so ignore what I just said there. But yeah, Jeff, Dave Christian, former U.S. Olympian, and Minnesota Moose, so I got those much right. But yeah, Jeff Christian is one that I'm friends with on Facebook, so hi, don't mind me. Uh, let's see, Mark LaForest... Saw him through, and I think it was Troy Gamble that he fought. Got that on video. Gino Cavallini, who was a, a longtime St. Louis Blue. 
eventually became captain there of the, uh, what do you call them, the Milwaukee Admirals. I've got a water here. I'm good. Thank you, though. Craig Conroy and Todd Simon in there as well. <coughs> and speaking of that water, let's go ahead and crack into this one. So good. All right, moving right along. So the baseball box, I only decided to open half of it. I'm going whole hog on the hockey one here. So we've got uh, Clayton Beddoes to start this one off. Beddoes is kind of a tough guy, if I remember right. Not really. Okay, I remember. Him, I seem to remember him having at least a few fights. But yeah, didn't really have a big uh, any big pim totals with it. Former uh, member of the Lake Superior State uh, hockey team. Got Gord Deneen, who's a longtime NHLer. Got Kevin Hodson, made it up eventually with the Red Wings. There we go. Peter Ferraro, one of the Ferraro twins that played for the Rangers, and I think both were with the Penguins, Peter and Chris Ferraro. There we go. Now, here's a tough guy with Andre Nazarov, one of the few uh, European enforcers out there, but he's from uh, Shelyabinsk, Russia. And another guy that didn't really put up a whole lot of big uh, penalty minute totals in the minors. 55 in 43 games during the 94-95 season in Kansas City, but put up 25 uh, points with it. The year before that, though, only seven games. I don't think that's correct. It says seven games, but 33 points, and no, that's 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 not right. 64 pims along with it. But then he's up to the NHL with San Jose, 26 games, 8 points, and 94 pims there for him. A very willing fighter, not necessarily, though, the most uh, able fighter that I've ever seen in my life. We've also got David Wilkie, and now... Remember how earlier I said there was a Detroit Viper that uh, was playing with the, with them that season, who was a uh, better known as a Washington Capital, but there it is, and it's on one of these ones with the uh, cool, uh, whatever the deal is on the uh, surface there. But that is Peter Bondra, 500 goal scorer in the NHL. Really cool to get him out of a minor league pack like that. I mean, especially I mean, this is in the middle of his career. He'd had 37, 24, and 34 goals in the previous three seasons before. Uh, Going into the IHL that year. We also got here Stan Drulia. I think I have this one signed. Got it done at the draft a couple of years ago. Oh, another guy to definitely mention here in a second when I get... Going to come back to this one that's in here. Uh, we've got Greg Hoggood, who spent a little bit of time with the Cleveland Lumberjacks at one point. Former Pittsburgh Penguin. Shown here with the Vegas Thunder. And Kevin McDonald of the Chicago Wolves. Another tough guy there. He had... Uh, 245 pims in 40 games in the AHL in 93-94 season with Prince Edward Island. Then put up 390 in 75 games in uh, Chicago in 94-95. So, guy who was not afraid to throw down just a bit. Speaking of guys not afraid to throw down, right there, Andy Bezo, Guy who holds some minor league penalty minute records. He may have the record for most penalty minutes in a season of pro hockey anywhere in the world, if I remember right. I think he actually hit 700 during a year in Russia. I'm going to have to double-check on that, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. But, uh, I mean, just looking at the numbers mentioned on the back here, three games with Fort Wayne in 94-95, 26 penalty minutes and an assist. Six games that year with Phoenix, 23 penalty minutes. And 46 games down in the Colonial Hockey League, which I think is the one that became the uh, UHL, U-Haul. And in those 46 games, he had 31 points and 357 pims. And this is a guy who was listed at 5'9", 185. This is a dude who was about my size back when I was actually in playing shape. And he's putting up 300-some penalty minute seasons there. I mean, good God. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, he was definitely one of my favorite uh, minor leaguers ever. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a nutcase. So let's see who else we've got here. We've got Steve Washburn, who eventually made up with the Florida Panthers, I believe. Shown here with that, the... Uh, I'm not even sure what team that is. The Monarchs, it says. I don't know. For life of me, I cannot remember what what city the Monarchs played in there at that point. Well, it's not the Manchester Monarchs. I don't think it was, at least. I mean, I don't think the Manchester Monarchs were around that early. I, I could be totally wrong, though. So, either way, though, cool. Uh, we've got Ron Tugnut, who was, uh, of course, with these Quebec Nordiques for a number of years. Also became a Pittsburgh Penguin, eventually. With Anaheim, played with Montreal. I think he had like a 70 save game, if I remember right, at one point. We've got a Jan Vopat. We've got Reggie Savage. Las Vegas Knights right there. Jason Saul of the St. John's Maple Leafs. 
Corey Stillman made it up eventually with the Flames. I think he was with Tampa Bay for a while. Carolina, maybe. And I don't know what it is about all these ones. I'm getting uh, all these ones with the fancy uh, card stock here. Detroit Vipers all the way on all of them, it seems like. That's Peter Savaglia right there on this one. Fortunately, I watched a lot of Vipers hockey along with the Lumberjacks. Used to catch their games when I uh, visited up in Michigan. Family there. Well, let's see, we've also got Jason Strudwick, who eventually made it with, uh, I know at least Vancouver for a while. May have been up with Toronto, I think, too. Something like that. Mark MacArthur, Alan Bester. I remember seeing Bester play for the Orlando Solar Bears. He was a uh, former Maple Leafs goalie as well. Got Chris Armstrong, also of the uh, that same Monarchs team that I'm seeing. They're going, what city were they in again? But there you go. Yeah, so I don't know. And uh, Darren Veach of the Peoria Rivermen. There we go. We'll slip those ones out. And who we got here? All right. Ooh, we're going to see an insert in the middle of this one, so we'll get to that one here in a bit. But first, let's unbrick these. There we go. Very carefully. We've got Jim Montgomery, recently uh, fired about a year ago as the coach of the Dallas Stars. That was Jim Montgomery, right? Yeah. I think it was Jim Montgomery. I'm pretty sure it was Jim Montgomery. I'm going to sound like an idiot if it wasn't Jim Montgomery. I know it was a Montgomery at the very least, and... Yeah. Yep, I hope that's who it was, because if it wasn't... If it wasn't him, I'm just going to go ahead and hang this up right now and say, yep, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm losing it, clearly. Uh, let's see here. So, my wife's looking it up right now. I'll get back to more of these here in a moment. We'll look through these first, at least. And, yes. ooh. It was Jim Montgomery? Correct. Yes, my memory's not failing me. Okay, we're good now. So, getting back to these, we've got Lonnie Loach, Patrick Augusta, Rob Brown. Man, this is a guy who put up over 100 points playing on a line with uh, Mario Lemieux. And that's the reason why, it's part of the reason why I believe that Mario Lemieux was a better player than Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky's line mates were absolutely ridiculous players still without him being there. Without Mario Lemieux on his line, Rob Brown, the only time he ever put up another 100-point season was, well, in the IHL, as he's shown right here. Lemieux put up 100... Yeah, okay, you can say, yo, well, Gretzky put up 200 points. Several times. Okay, yeah. He also had, I mean, a guy like Yari Curry finishing for him. He had uh, Glenn Anderson out there finishing for him, so he can rack up the assists. Mario Lemieux's having to drag around slugs like Rob Brown to try to put up 199 points. If you're doing that with a guy like Rob Brown, who can never put up 100 points again, except for when he's in the IHL, I think you're a better player there, then. I mean, you're not having to rely, you don't have the solid line mates there, you're having to carry a lot more of the weight, then. Oh, and by the way, two NHL defensemen who have played against both guys agree with me on that point, so don't at me on this. Also got a Jim Carrey, who I mentioned earlier in the masks uh, set there, the wall insert. Got Dale DeGray of the Cincinnati Cyclones. He played for a bit in Cleveland as well the year before. Nice. And this is one from the Crucible insert. Those ones were, uh, what was the odds on those? The Crucible was one in every 20 packs. And there you go, another Jim Carrey right there. Really cool looking one. Kind of on that Optichrome stock right there. Yeah, definitely liking this one. Moving on, we've got Chris Govaderis. We've got Fabian Joseph. We've got Aaron Miller, who eventually went on to the LA Kings. Showing here playing with the Cornwall Aces, a Quebec Nordiques product at the time. Also got Andrew McBain. I believe he's a former Penguin, if I remember right, and former Vancouver Canuck. Also played with Ottawa. A couple hundred PIM seasons out there. Also a guy who could put up 40 points a year. Vegas Thunder. Interesting, shown with the Vegas Thunder here, but listed as being with the Fort Wayne Comets, so couldn't get a new photo of him in time. And we've got Danny Lorenz, goalie of the Cyclones, as well. Four more packs to go here on this particular column. And let's see here. We've got Scott Walker. Yeah, come on, there we go. Peel that off of there. Scott Walker, kind of a tough guy, put up uh, 272 and 334 penalty minute seasons in the minor leagues. Another guy yeah. who was... Gazootenheit. Sorry. Another guy who really wasn't very big. He's listed 5'9", 180 on this card, but another one who'd fight all comers. 
think he was up with Nashville for a bit in the NHL, maybe a couple other spots. Oh, let's see. We've got a couple from the Albany River Rats. Peter Sikora went out to a pretty nice NHL career. Chris McAlpine played up there for a bit as well. From the is this Prince Edward Island? Yeah, Prince Edward Island Senators, the late Pavel Dimitra. One of the players killed in the uh, Tractor Shelyabinsk uh, plane crash. We've got Steve Sullivan. Went out to a nice career with mostly, uh, who was he with? Mostly uh, Nashville. They also played for a bit with, I think it was Phoenix, Toronto, and New Jersey. We've got Dan Curry. We've got Chris Imes. Rene Corbet, another uh, fairly tough guy right there. Played uh, with Quebec and Colorado. Remember him throwing down with uh, Marty Lapointe and possibly Brendan Shanahan at some point during the uh, Brawl in Hockey Town years there between the Avs and the Red Wings. One of my favorites right here, Yane Laukkanen. Had a nice career with the Penguins. Also played, of course, here with, uh, you see him with Cornwall Aces, so came with Quebec. Was with, uh, God, who else? Ottawa at one point, I think. The Penguins, like I said. Maybe Tampa Bay, not sure who else, but absolutely loved watching him with the Penguins. So one of my favorite players right there. Glad to get this one. Actually coaching over in Finland. I TTM'd him a few years ago over there. Got Paul Vincent right here, who is in a Facebook group that I'm in, actually, the Enforcer Appreciation Group. He's a member in there. Got Alexei Kudashov, and we've got Scott Langkow of the Springfield Falcons. Continuing our way on through this, uh, this box. Tony Herkus, I've TTM'd him a couple of times, and actually talked to him on the phone briefly as well. He used to call the uh, office of the hockey team that I worked with back when I was broadcasting. Moving through here, we've got Mark Kolasar. Got Shane Toporowski. I was hoping I might see a car of Kerry Toporowski in here, but Kerry was a bit of a nutcase. I think he was actually, he was actually drafted in the first round, but never made it up to the NHL. Had a uh, it was about 535 penalty minute season, I think, his last year of juniors when he got drafted. But there's his brother Shane. And yeah, Shane had some nice uh, numbers there as well. Uh, Prince Albert in the WHL had seasons of. 74 points and 151 PIMs, 82 points and 183 PIMs, and 57 points with 235. So, guy who was uh, no stranger to the penalty box, that's for sure. We've got uh, Patrice Tardif. We've got Mike Wilson. Kevin Brown as well. There we go. Continuing on our theme of uh, Vipers players with this uh, different um, card stock. I still don't know what the name of that insert, what this insert is, but... We've got Rick Nickel, their goalie, with it. We've got the brother of the great one, Brent Gretzky, right there. Didn't quite have the success in the NHL that Wayne did, but eventually did get up with uh, Tampa Bay for a bit. Also got uh, Janne Gronval, another Finn right there from Rauma, Finland. Played with Tapara. We've got uh, Lani Bahanas. We've got David Oliver, and we've got Victor Gordiu. We go two more packs to go in this column we're at the 27 minute mark wow so hopefully you're all entertained by minor league hockey because if not then uh, you probably shut this off by now but let's go on through here we've got anders erickson we've got radek bonk this would have been a huge card around this time because let's talk about him going number one in the draft at that point i mean vegas he had put up uh, let's see here yeah came to vegas in 93 as a 17 year old Played 76 games, 42 goals, 45 assists for 87 points, and 208 penalty minutes. And there's talk that he could go number one in the draft. He eventually fell number three to Ottawa. Never quite put it together in the NHL, but yeah, there he is with Vegas. It's kind of weird. To this day, he will not sign Las Vegas Thunder items. I've got a card of him with Vegas that I need him on for a set, and he said, nope, not signing it. I just want to forget about those times. It's like, okay, that sucks. So... We've also got here Jeff Sargent. We've got David Sacco. Not sure if he's... I guess he's probably the brother of Joe Sacco. Doesn't say on here if he is or not, though. But uh, they look kind of similar, and I think they're both from the same area there because David Sacco says here is from Malden, and I think Joe Sacco is a Boston area guy, too. We've got Jamie Ram. We've got Stefan Beauregard. Beauregard was up with the Jets at one point. Yeah, Winnipeg Jets. Robin Bawa, this was a guy who was a total crasher. I mean, the uh, card of him there kind of shows it, too, because 
if you look, it's like he had just gotten either ran into a goalie on his own or got shoved into the goalie, and they're kind of stuck there on the end boards. Yeah, he had, what, 184 in 71 for Kalamazoo, plus 34 points as well in 94-95. Played up briefly with Anaheim, played a bit with Milwaukee as well, and he's shown here with the short-lived San Francisco Spiders. Kevin Deneen here, he was a guy I always liked in the NHL, a guy who could uh, put up 20 goals and 150 penalty minutes in any given year. Coached a bit in the NHL as well. Got Jason McBain. We've got Kerry Clark. Another tough guy right here, and uh, you're probably more familiar with his brother, Wendell. But there you go. Kerry was shown here with... Who is this with? That's with the Orlando Solar Bears. Okay. Played with Salt Lake, played with Portland. But yeah, it says here, yeah, brother of uh, Wendell Clark and cousin of Barry Melrose. Seasons of 255, 309, and 282 penalty minutes there with Salt Lake and Portland. The IHL and AHL, so... There we go. We also got cards here of Craig Darby and Brian Fogarty. Fogarty died young, had a lot of uh, alcohol problems throughout his career that really derailed what could have been a very promising NHL career. I mean, there are people who are comparing him to Bobby Orr coming out of the OHL, and he put up 155 points in his final year of juniors and just end up derailed pretty well because of that. But yeah. There you go. He actually played a little bit with the uh, Cleveland Lumberjacks briefly as well toward the end of his career. Final pack of this column, we have Manon Rayom, first woman ever to play in a men's pro hockey game. Right there. Shown there with the Las Vegas Thunder. Played uh, two games with Las Vegas, 0-1 record, three goals against, uh, or three goals allowed, and a 3.41 goals against. Not too bad. ECHL in the 93-94 season, she played with Knoxville and Nashville. Eight games with those two teams combined, a 5-0-1 record. Nice. Uh, 3.64 goals against with Nashville and a 4.17 against Knoxville. So, there you go. Good one to get right there. Not sure. I don't think she TTMs anymore, but I'll have to check that out again. I believe uh, Pascal Rayom is her brother, if I remember right, and I've gotten his autograph in person a few times. Got Chris Herpiger, who went on to the Cleveland Lumberjacks eventually. Here's shown with uh, Hershey on this card. John Casey, longtime netminder for Minnesota North Stars, shown here with Peori. He also played with uh, Boston and St. Louis. So Patrick Boileau, we have Shane Wright, Brandon Convery. Another one of these ones of uh, Michael Pavanka. So we've got... Uh, Right there. I think we already had one of these uh, foil type ones show up on him. Got the regular one of Peter Savaglia. We've got Larry Corville. Corville can throw down a little bit at least. 134 PIM season with New Market, 93 94. We've got John Purvis. Here's the regular one of Peter Bondra. So there we go. Got the uh, regular card and the foil card of him, both in this box. And Darren Van Imp is in there as well. So. Fun stuff here through one column of this box. We'll go ahead and get ready to break out the second one here. Very carefully put these back in. There we go. And there we go. Alrighty then. So, even the packs kind of are sticking together a little bit. I mean, you see, you can hear them as I'm pulling them apart. Oh, oh, oh. See if I can pull this all the way up. Hey, there we go. Check that out. All of them stuck together there, but ah, there we go. So go ahead and separate these real quick and we'll get to opening. I had to buy a couple 5,000 count boxes while I was out there too. So got three more of those to load stuff into and hopefully kind of get this whole area continually further under control and sort it out. And so let's go ahead and break these on open. It's going to turn into a super long video, so, yeah. All right, so we have Sergei Klimentiev. We have Mike Dunham, who I mentioned earlier. There we go. Rick Nickel, whose name has been brought up a bit. Michael Groshek, a guy I used to get in person a few times here and there with the Sabres and the Bruins. With Winnipeg as well. Got Todd Richards right here. Come on, let's separate you two. There we go, all right. Richard's a little bit of a tough guy as well, 122 and 130 pims. Victor Kozlov, he was a big name for a little while. 
You may remember if you've been collecting hockey for a long time, he had uh, signed a whole ton of cards for Classic around 93 or so. Signed his full name on like the first maybe 100 or first 1,000 or something like that and signed the rest with just the initials VK and that was it. So the full name variations are tougher to find and we're selling for like five times as much as the VK variation for a while. Didn't quite turn into the huge star out there at all, but had some decent years with San Jose and Florida. Right? Was it Florida? Yeah, I think it was Florida. Got Troy Gamble, I mentioned him earlier as I think he fought uh, Mark Laforest, if I remember right. It was a Burke that fought Laforest, and either way, Troy Gamble's had a couple goalie fights. Mark Laforest had a couple of them as well. So Patrick Neaton right there went on to play eventually for, uh, actually played the year before for the Cleveland Lumberjacks, before going to San Diego and then the Orlando Solar Bears, shown here. Jeff Medill, yeah, tough guy right there, 207 penalty minutes for the Denver Grizzlies in 94-95. Mike Buzak of the Ice Cats, David Littman of the Ice Dogs. Worcester Ice Cats, East Coast AHL, the Long Beach Ice Dogs, West Coast IHL. Alrighty then. And for the Flames, we have here Jesper Matson of Malmo, Sweden. Second column, pack number two. A little bit of a delay right now in the outdoor game there, trying to fix some uh, ice problems it looked like. See here we have Alexander Vasilevsky, we have Rob Cowie. Friend of mine actually used the uh, screen name of Cowie because he was a big Rob Cowie fan. Uh, let's see here we have Frederick Bobien, we have Kent Manderville as well. Come on, let's get these separated there. Ah, there we go. All right, Jason Zent. And hey, that's pretty nifty. We got another one of the foil versions of the Peter Bondra cards. So. Very happy with that. That's two of those out of this box here, so nice. Probably the best player that's in this entire product right there. So we're getting two of probably the best card of the best player. Can't really beat that. Moving on through here, we have Jeff Nelson. Now, this Jeff Nelson, what I know I have signed. I TTM'd him somewhat recently, maybe about a year ago or so. Got a Stefan Ustorf out of Germany. Kevin, I'm not sure if that's Miam, Mayam, Mime. Something like that. M I E H M. I know nothing about him. Got Ralph Intranuovo. We've got Bob Asenza, former goalie for the Jets, and spent a little bit of time with the Red Wings as well. He eventually was the goalie coach of the Bruins while I was living up in Boston. Never was lucky enough to see him leaving the arena, though, so never got any cards uh, signed by him at any point. Moving on to here, we've got a checklist to start things out. Well, we've got two checklists to start things out. Oh, okay. Get your stuff together, will ya? Will ya, Collector's Edge? I mean, geez. That's, uh... This is the pack that everybody uh, would absolutely love to get, because it starts out with four different checklists to start the pack. So, uh... Oof. Ouch. We've also got here Tommy Sallow. He's one that I really need to get. He's, uh... He's in the top's total set that I'm working on. He's one of the last nine cards that I still need out of that set. Used to be a good TTMer over in Sweden, but hasn't signed in about 10 years at all, and I'm not willing to give it a try here either. So maybe if I get another couple cards of him, I'll give it a try. Uh, I need to cover, well, another couple of cards, copies of that uh, top's total card, at least, I should say. Another one of those hat trick ones. This would be a signed base card from a team of your choice if this had been 25 years ago. We also have here Sergei Klimovic, Paul Healy, Ryan Haggerty, Freddie Brathwaite, Landon Wilson, and Kevin Weeks. So, interesting right there. Landon Wilson, his father was a former NHL player, Rick Wilson, uh, who was Dallas Stars assistant coach, and Landon was playing for the Stars for a bit as well while Rick was coaching there. Kevin Weeks and Fred Brathwaite to... Uh, African-Canadian African goalies here. One from Toronto, one from Ottawa. Both made it up through the uh, minors and in the NHL at around the same time there as well. Weeks a 75 birth year, Brathwaite a 72. Yeah. Kind of cool getting those two in the same pack there. All right, out of this pack. We'll start from the back here on this one, see if it makes it any easier to peel them apart. Got Tom Draper. Really for the Admirals. Got one of my favorite players right here. It's a guy who I share a birthday with. 
Saw him play a lot when I was a kid. He's the, I believe, retired as the all-time leading scorer in the International Hockey League, Mr. Jock Callender. Still works with the team. Um, does some broadcast work and front office stuff with them. And to answer my further, my to answer my previous question, it looks like yes, there is a blue border around those numbers. So I may have to get my uh, Rick Hayward jersey redone. Got a Mike Stevens in here, as uh, we mentioned him earlier, another former Cleveland Lumberjack. We've got uh, Jason Cullimore. We've got Todd McDonald, a goalie for the Monarchs. Uh, let's see, Manny Fernandez. Got Jamie Langenbrunner right there. He actually uh, knows quite well the former coaches of the Wildcats from the first few years that I worked there. I used to hang out with him in high school, if I remember right. Name dropped them in my letter to him, and he wrote back, said, yep, I do know those guys quite well, so there you go. One of my favorite players right here, Sergei Gonchar of the, well, shown here with the Portland Pirates. Later played for the Capitals, the Bruins, the Penguins, the Senators, the Stars, Canadians. I think that covers everybody. Great signer in person. Great signer through the mail as well. I probably have like 60 cards signed by him at this point. Um, I may have TTM him again now just to be able to get this one done to add to it. But I've probably got another 40 cards sitting here of him unsigned. So, hey, if you're a TTMer and you're still watching this and you want some Sergey Gonchar cards to get signed, let me know. I'll send you a few unsigned ones and mail off to your heart's content there with the guy. I mentioned Peter Farrow earlier. There is his twin brother, Chris, who I brought up. We've got a Dwayne Rolson. We've got a Mark Freer. And we have a Drew Bannister of the Atlanta Knights. One of the few hockey-playing Drews out there, so... Always good to see that. I think a few Andrews in the NHL, but he's the only Drew that I can name off the top of my head right now. Other than, okay, Drew Shore, I guess. That's about it. So, continuing on through, right in the middle of this pack, we have another one of those wall inserts there with Manny Fernandez. And let's see here. So, base cards out of this pack. We have Tavis Hansen. We have Dave Tomlinson. We have Don Biggs, another guy who could throw down a little bit with Cincinnati. We've got Derek Smith of the Michigan K-Wings. So they were going by the Michigan K-Wings at this part, at this point, rather than the Kalamazoo Wings. Change their names at some point in there. We've got Sean Rivers of the Chicago Wolves. We've got Paul Lawless of Cincinnati. Jared Scald of the Baltimore Bandits. Uh, Martin Brochu for the Fredericton Canadiens. Brian Rolston of the Albany River Rats. He's another one I used to see play with the Bruins when he got traded off to them. Got him in person a number of times there. Andre Y, I think I have, yeah, I definitely have this card signed somewhere. He's a tough guy for Tampa Bay the year they won the cup the first time around. And we've got a Chris Snell in here as well. So now that I think about it, I'm looking at the back here and I see, oh wait, it has the city name on the back of all these. Now I just have to find... Uh, Trying to figure out where that Monarchs team was from. Let's see if it says it on the back, and I've just been stupid and missed it this whole time. Which is entirely possible. Moving on through here. Pirates, Pirates, Comets, Comets. Come on, guys. Numbers. I know I've got at least one somewhere in here in this pile. There we go. The Monarchs. The Carolina Monarchs. That had to have been the AHL then. So... No wonder I have never heard of them in my life. I mean, I were they around for more than one season? I mean, that's I I can I have never heard of the Carolina Monarchs in my life up until this point. And I know minor league hockey pretty well, clearly, so wow. They had to have always existed for only a year. I'm just gonna take a guess on that. So continuing on through here, we have a Nikolai Suligin. I remember getting a card of him from just after he was drafted. I think he ever made it much further than the uh, AHL, though. <clears throat> Got Todd Marchand, who played a pretty lengthy NHL career. I actually have that card. I may have it signed, too. Not really certain, though. Got Neil Eisenhut. We have Jeff Sharples. Wendell Young, I mentioned earlier. Former Pittsburgh Penguin goalie. Also Tampa Bay. Looks like he had a couple of stints with the Penguins, as he played for them in 94-95 as well. Got Lonnie Loach. Mentioned him a little bit earlier. This is one of those uh, foil ones again there. I'm going to have to go through and figure out what these foil ones are, because 
Seems like I've been getting one about in every three packs or thereabouts, and it says like nothing about them anywhere on here, so. Cool card, at least. We've got Dale Craigwell, Alexander Harlamov, Chris Marinucci. Okay, yeah, Alexander Harlamov, going back to him, he is the son of the, possibly the greatest Russian player in history of Valery Harlamov. Oh, so yeah, Chris Marinucci, we've got Derek Wilkinson. He was a favorite of mine, played for the Cleveland Lumberjacks when they were aligned with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Shown here with the Atlanta Knights. Made up with uh, Tampa Bay there for a little bit in the NHL, too. But Scott Bailey, and we have former Red Wing defenseman Aaron Ward. Ward went on to a pretty nice career there with them and uh, the Kings as well, if I remember right. I mentioned Aaron Miller earlier. Now that I think about it, Aaron Miller was not a king. He was definitely with uh, Quebec and then up with uh, Colorado after that. After that move. Down to what? We've got three six-packs left here, so halfway through the second column here. I'm starting to see some doubles in here. Uh, we've got Greg Puslowski, Matthias Nordstrom, Martin Lapointe, Michel Picard, Jan Shaloon, uh, Jamie Allison, Ryan Savoya. Got Jamie Rivers right here. He was actually coaching in the... He was in the CHL and ECHL fairly recently with one of the teams around in Missouri out there. Forget exactly which one, but it's been around a bit. We've also got Patrice Lefebvre. We've got uh, Aaron Gavey, Rob Dobson, and Sebastian Bordalo all in here. Pretty fast one to go through right there, because it's a lot of doubles. Moving into this one here. And some more doubles out of this one. We've got uh, Eric Lecomte. We've got Michael Pivanka. Corey Schwab. Yannick Perrault. We've got Zygmunt Palfi. We've got Mike Maniluk. Got another Crucible one right here, this time of Kenny Janssen, longtime NHLer there with Toronto and then mostly known as a New York Islander. Got another one of Mark Don't Call Me Rick Astley. Darby Hendrickson is in there as well. Scott Arneal, Todd Gillingham, and Peter White. So, a lot of doubles again in that pack. I'm kind of wondering if these last four packs might also be pretty much entirely doubles in there as well, but... If so, that would seem to be a sign that maybe I've got an entire base set here. It'd be kind of cool to have. So, spend a little bit of time sorting them a little bit later on here today. And yeah, it looks like more doubles here because we have Andres Johansson, Nikolai Habibulin, Stefan Maureen, uh, Chris Tamer. Also got Eric Fischoud, Evgeny Ryabchikov, Peter Savaglia on that foil there once again. Yet again, a Detroit Viper with that. Doug Evans, we've got uh, Corey Hirsch, Barry Moore, Chris Terrian, and Valerie Burre. So, yep, I've got a feeling we've just got doubles left the rest of the way here. So, I'm just going to go ahead and stop it right here before I bore any of you any further. But, uh, hey, thanks for checking this out once again. Um, like I said, if anybody needs some Sergey Gonchar cards, let me know. I'll send a few your way because I've got more than I'll ever need. And so, once again, um, hopefully we're going to have a much better week next week in terms of the mailbox and... Hopefully we'll be seeing those uh, Jason Kipnis and uh, Bill Mazeroski cards come in, and hopefully a whole lot more besides that. I just sent out 29 more requests today. Hopefully those will come back soon, too. So, thanks again for tuning in. SportsCardForum.com. Go and check that out, and we will see you around.